Well, good morning. Welcome to worship for all of us gathered here and for those joining us on Facebook or later in the week on uh, TV. I'm so glad we can come together to celebrate together, to hear the word of God preached to us, and to join in the Lord's Supper. Uh, before we begin worship, we've got some announcements. Women's Night Out is June 7th at 6.30. Uh, this time they're meeting at the Grand. So I'm still upset that I can't go because I keep hearing how fun they are. And one of these days, I think we might have to do a men's night out, but we'll just like meet in a garage somewhere. Yeah? We could get food, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, but women's night out, wonderful opportunity. There's, is there a sign-up sheet out on the board out in the social hall? So you can check that out. Um, VBS. We have VBS coming up. Uh, this week is our prep week for VBS, so if you stop by church this week, you will see a lot of work being done. Um, there's a lot that goes into VBS, and I am so thankful for Lindsay and for all of our volunteers who do amazing work. Um, but along with that, we do need some supplies still. Um, there are some listed in your grab-and-go, so make sure you take that with you. Uh, and on the website, you can find an updated list just in case, you know, things come up last minute. You can take a look there and see uh, how you can help out with VBS this coming week. Or, well, with preparing for VBS and then <laughs> for VBS uh, the week after. Uh, this week, we have something kind of fun for our 6th to 8th graders. We have Comfy Couch at Caribou. Notice, three C's, it's really fancy, right? We worked hard on that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, but that's June 8th at 10 a.m. We're going to meet at Caribou. Uh, we're going to do some comfy couch questions. We're just going to get a chance to talk to each other, uh, maybe have like a couple triple espressos and then send you back home to your parents. No? <laughs> uh, but it'll be a wonderful time to, to gather together and the last thing I have on here is volunteers. We still have our volunteer sign-up sheets out there in the social hall, uh, and that just helps us to find ways to worship, uh, to, to bring everybody together in worship. So please take a look out at that volunteer sign-up sheet uh, so you can find a way to help in worship. So with all that said, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to stand as you're able and we'll join in our call to worship. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Welcome, everyone. To the love of God, rest for the weary, rest for the weary, welcome everyone to the love of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, 
whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We'll take a moment for reflection. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sin, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We'll join in our Kyrie. Let us pray together. God, our creator, the resurrection of your son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The reading for today is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, 
what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. The psalm for today is Psalm 104, verses 24 to 35b. We will read the psalm responsively. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things both great and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Alleluia. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 14. Lord, Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you, do not, if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. 
I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he is, it will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I would invite the kids up. I have lots of things to show you today, so come on up. I might need some help, kids. So, Okay, a lot of things to show you. So I'm going to be standing up because I want to show everybody. Okay. So the first thing I want to show you is this picture. Anybody know what this picture is? What is it, Gavin? It's a picture of the church. In the old days. That is exactly right, Gavin. This is the church, the very first church of our saviors looked like this. And it was at 8 North Broadway, and it was built in 1949, and they dedicated it in 1950. So this is what it looked like way back then. Okay, let's have them out there. Did anybody here today go to that church and worship? Raise your hand if you've been inside this church. Oh, look at there's some people over there. Some people, not very many, but a few people actually worshipped in that building. And then, let me see, does anybody know what this is a picture of? It's, this is another picture of a church that we celebrate God. But here's something really cool. This is this church. And do you know where this cross used to be at Our Savior's? That's the crazy thing. It wasn't up there. The cross was right over here. There weren't all those organ, organ uh, pipes there. So the church used to be this way. So if you were sitting in the balcony, you could see everything. So let's have them raise their hands again. How many of you were in the church when it looked like this at Our Savior's Razor? Oh, now there's a lot of people that were at the church that looked like this. I wasn't even in that church. So now I have some other things to show you. So does anybody know what this is? Know what this is? This is called a cassette tape. And back in a lot of years ago, you know, Gavin, Gavin, I think you could help us write our church history. You are exactly right. They didn't put this on the TV, our worship service now on TV, but they would record it onto these tapes. And then they would take these tapes to people who couldn't get to church. For various reasons, they couldn't come to church. They were bound in their home, or maybe they were in the nursing home, so they'd deliver these tapes so they could hear our worship service. Now, today, do we use cassette tapes? No, what do we do? We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, and we're even on TV. Twice a week, our service is. And some people use those for songs. Raise your hand, that was how I listened to songs. <laughs> okay, so then I have these books. We don't use these books at Our Saviors anymore, but this is like when kids came to Linked, it's called Sunday School, and these were some of the old books they used. We don't use these on Wednesdays anymore, do we? Or Sundays. And then I have one more thing that's really fun. I have this old shirt, and what does it say? It says, 
says, our Savior's new almond. You know what this is? This is an old softball jersey. Did you know that our Saviors used to have a softball team? Some of you knew that? Okay, does anybody remember when our Saviors had a softball team? Quite a few of you. Did anybody play on the softball team? Oh, look, we have someone who played on the softball team. So I tell you this because today's kind of a special day. We're going to have cake afterwards. Because on Wednesday, today's June 5th. Yeah, yay for cake. Today's June 5th. But in three days, June 8th, in the year 1947, that was long before I was born, even longer before you were born, on that day, that's when our Saviors officially became a church, on June 8th, 1947. Do you know how many years ago that is? 75 years. So we're kind of having a little celebration that our Saviors is 75 years old. So we're going to have cake afterwards. And in the fall, we're going to have a really, really big party to celebrate 75 years. But I tell you this because things change over the years, don't they? The church looks different. We use different things for Sunday school. We don't use cassettes anymore. But you know what's always the same in the church? God. God is always the same. God loves us. God is with us, God is guiding us, and God is leading us. So even though some things change, that really important piece of God being with us and leading us and helping us, that part's always the same. So let's have a prayer together. Dear Lord, thank you for the people who began our saviors. Lead us and guide us to where you want us to go now. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, some interesting tidbits about the Our Saviors, about the history of Our Saviors, or maybe we could say some important things to show us and witness to us as to how the Holy Spirit has been at work at Our Saviors for these 75 years. So, as I told the kids, today's June 5th, and just three days on June 8th, 1947. That is the formal organization of this congregation. And that's actually the day, June 8, 1947, where they adopted unanimously the name of our Savior's Lutheran Church of New Alm, when given a choice of seven names. So in 1947, by that fall, they had 33 students enrolled in Sunday school. Now, only 13 years later, in 1960, there were 237 children in Sunday school. Isn't that remarkable? A radio ministry began in 1951, but now today, here we are, we're on Facebook and YouTube and television. The first meeting of the people that were interested in starting our church, there were six families who were represented, and they met at the Grand Hotel. The congregation's first worship service was at the Pine Room of the Silver Latch Cafe, which is currently the Gutentag House. After outgrowing that room, by that very fall, they moved to the city filter plant at 3rd North. And from there, they moved to Creamery Hall, which is now Broadway House Apartments. And then in 1949, they built their first church building. It was dedicated in 1950. And only 10 years later, they had outgrown that, and they came here in 1960 um, at 1400 South State. And of course, we've had two additions to the building since 1960. <clears throat> but the moves and the buildings weren't about just wanting a bigger and better church, were they? It was all about their mission. 
It was about having enough space for worship and Sunday school and choirs and fellowship and mission projects. It was about becoming more accessible by adding an elevator in 2004. It was about people with a vision, willing to take a risk, even though in 1947 there were those who said, ah, our saviors, that won't last very long. During the 75 years, not only have there been building projects, but there have been countless Bible studies. A woman's organization formed in the 50s, it continues. A church library was formed, mission trips, mission projects. But something else was going on here too. And that was that our saviors was gaining a reputation of being open and welcome to all. Now, why do I tell you this today? It is to remind you of how the Holy Spirit has been at work in and through this congregation for 75 years. And for us to see on this Pentecost that Pentecost isn't a one-time deal. Pentecost is the birthday of the church. It is the day in which the church was born by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the room where the disciples had gathered. And those who were gathered there from all over the world heard the good news of Jesus in their very own language. I mean, that must have been amazing, don't you think? And then the church grew from there. People were baptized. The followers were devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and to the breaking of the bread and to prayers. But see, Pentecost isn't about reliving the glory days. An anniversary isn't about only reliving the glory days. Pentecost is present tense. It's ongoing. It continues. It doesn't end. We only have to look at the history of this church to know how the Holy Spirit has continued to be at work. The Holy Spirit continues to move and inspire and lead God's people. We here at Our Saviors continue to be devoted to Christ's teaching and to fellowship, and to prayer. Now, I see the Spirit moving, not just in our history, of course, but right now. I mean, could the first 54 charter members have imagined two school buses full of children coming here on Wednesdays for choir and faith formation? I mean, could the members who began a tape ministry or a radio ministry have imagined our services on YouTube? and Facebook, and going all over the world, not to mention TV? Could they have imagined that we would not only sponsor missionaries, but we would take our own mission trips all over the United States with youth and adults and go all the way to Tanzania? Could the six families meeting at the Grand Hotel in March of 1947 have imagined that 75 years later, in that very same place at the Grand Hotel, we would be gathering for a woman's night out? I mean, I think that's holy ground there, don't you? Maybe those early moves in different places for worship for our saviors, I think they show us what the church is really about. And it isn't the building. I mean, the building's important, but the church isn't a building. The church is the people called, enlightened, and sanctified for the work of Jesus Christ. And the so the Spirit has moved in many ways in this congregation. Some of the ways are very visible, like a new building or increasing membership numbers, but it's also seen in ways and known in ways that aren't as visible. It is seen in the people who last week, two different people on my visits told me how much the cards of caring meant for them because it meant we haven't forgotten them, and then that each card was so beautiful. It is seen in the confirmation student, who many years after graduating called her mentor because she needed to talk through, through some, some things that she'd been contemplating. It is seen in the things you see all around this church building that people no longer here have either built or have given, to make this place more welcoming and more functional. I see the Holy Spirit at work in the fact that we have three of our youth working at Shores of St. Andrew this summer, and the camp is led by one of our former youth. 
I mean, the Spirit is at work. The Spirit is at work in the stories we share every week of grief and burdens and illness and the stories we share of the joys and highlights in our lives. Where do you see the Holy Spirit leading and working at our Savior's? You see, whenever I'm present at gatherings at our Savior's on Wednesdays or Sundays, inside or outside the church, I look around and I observe so much love between the people of our Savior's. I see the hug, the smile, the attentiveness, the care. And it's a beautiful thing. It truly is. And that's the Holy Spirit. And I tell you what, that is what everybody remarks on when they come back to church after the pandemic. This is what I've missed. I've missed the people. While the first meeting for those interested in a new church was in March of 1947, as I said, it was June 8, 1947, when we were formally organized and named our saviors. So it seems to me that on Pentecost, three days before the 75th anniversary of our formally organizing, this is a good day to think about where we've been, how God has been working in and through us, but it's also a good day to remember we can't stop there. Now we need to ask, where now is the Spirit leading us? We are witnesses ourselves to 75 years of people taking risks and being bold in sharing the love of Jesus because it takes some courage, doesn't it, to do what those people did at the beginning in 1947? So the question for us is, where will we be bold and take risks so that in 75 more years, there will be a group here who will be able to say, we're here and we're who we are because of 150 years of people committing and being bold in sharing the love of Jesus. Each of us sharing, using our own abilities. I wonder if in the light of Pentecost, maybe the question is this, what languages do we need to learn so that everyone can come to know the good news of Jesus. Because I wonder if we're more like the early church than the organizers of our saviors in 1947. Do you know what I mean? I wonder if there are more people today in New Alm and the surrounding area who don't know Jesus than there were in 1947. You know, we heard a list of languages spoken at the first Pentecost. So that makes me ask, what languages do we need to learn so that all people can hear the good news of Jesus? I mean, think about the pandemic. We had to learn a new language during the pandemic. When we couldn't meet in person, we had to learn the new language of, wow, how are we going to use Facebook and YouTube to reach people at home now that the pandemic has hit? So we've learned new languages. What other languages do we need to learn? I think we need to learn the language of the poor. I think we need to learn the language, which is what Wednesdays is about, of the very, very busy. We need to learn the language of all those who feel on the outside of God's love. You know, they don't feel they fit in anywhere because they haven't been accepted for who they are. In our divided learn world, we need to learn the language of reconciliation and collaboration. We really can't keep doing things the same way. Linked has shown us what it looks like to be bold. And in that case, I mean, wow, what great results we had that now we need to build on. So as an aside, I'm going to tell you right now that Linked was so successful that we're going to need more help this fall. You know, we need more people to help us serve snacks, to teach and assist. So our kids need you. Other languages we need to learn, I think we need to learn the language of those who are alone and know what that's like. We need to learn the language of those who feel isolated and maybe even angry, like Pastor Dave talked about last week. We need to be open 
to learning and growing, and then to be bold in reaching out to the world the way it is today, asking ourselves where in 2022 do we need to be as open and welcoming as our reputation has been? Because we have, as followers of Jesus, if we know anything for sure, it is that we need the love of Jesus in our own lives, and we know the world needs the love of Jesus too. And let's remember, it is about love. It's not about force or fear or threat or judgment. Jesus makes it very clear in his farewell discourse in John that the disciples of Jesus are known by their love. And know, too, the promise that Jesus gives us in today's gospel as we think about being bold. Remember what Jesus said? Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name. I mean, yes, really, greater works. See, the Spirit did not stop moving and working on Pentecost. The Spirit did not quit working when the last edition was put on to our Saviors in 2004. The Spirit is still working. That's the promise. Believe that. Trust that. And act on that with boldness. 75 years is a celebration of what has been, and it is a witness to a witness to the men and women and children and youth, those men and women who were bold, who trusted God and trusted that the Holy Spirit would continue to guide them and lead them and teach them and remind them of what Jesus had taught them. They trusted that the Holy Spirit would continue to be at work, leading them into the future, and so they were bold. That's present tense Pentecost. Let's trust that. Let's not stay in the past or stay in the sanctuary. Let's be fed and nourished here and then rise and let's be on our way and go where the Spirit leads. For we are the church and we can be bold. We're the body of Christ. We're called, enlightened, and sanctified for the work of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. So please stand, and we're not singing the hymn that's in your bulletin. We're singing the hymn that's up on the um, screens. We are the church. Please stand.
Let's join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray for the God of resurrection, for the church, people in need, and for all of creation. God of our present tense Pentecost, move among us. Remind us of our past, where you have led us and where you will lead us. Continue to be our guide and path. Teach us how to reach out to people that are on the margins or who have been excluded. Open our hearts to your calling. Give us courage to be bold in learning, teaching, serving, loving, welcoming and giving. Lord, we pray. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. Lord, we pray. Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering, especially Audrey, Russ, Dixie, Brad, Randy, Aurora, Sharon, Joyce, Ken, Anne, Dave, Tom, George, Carol, Pam, Keith, and Sharon. We also pray for those that we lift up now, out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that you are never far away from them. Lord, we pray. O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
This morning, we won't pass around the plates, but we do have our offering plates up front or over by that door so that you can place your offering in there. With that said, let's join in our offertory song. Let us pray. God of wisdom, in your Son, Jesus, you show us the way of life. You teach us to love one another and to share the gifts of our lives. Receive these gifts, fruit of the earth and harvest of our labor, and lead us always by your wise guiding. Amen. We'll join in singing the great thanksgiving. The God of life be with you always. Lift up your hearts, lift up your minds. Let us thank our gracious God. We remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This morning, communion will be served uh, around the altar. We'll have you come forward row by row, and you'll be served a piece of bread or a gluten-free wafer upon request, and then you'll be served uh, wine or grape juice. And we have baskets on either side of the sanctuary where you can place those empty cups. This is the table of Christ. Christ has prepared a meal for us that feeds us and sends us out into the world. So come and be filled with the Holy Spirit. All are welcome.
Holy God has fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. May it strengthen us for all of our days to come and keep us growing in the joy of the Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and we receive the benediction. May God bless you with courage, hope, and joy. May God make you bold in your service. May God help you to share the blessings that you have been given. May God inspire you by tongues of flame, neighbors, friends, strangers, and by the leading of the Spirit. May God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you as you serve. Amen. We'll join in our sending hymn, Spirit of Gentleness. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.